2002, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, in its infinite wisdom, decided that the D.A.R.E. program was not priority enough to continue or fund. Like many health and human service programs across the uh, Commonwealth, it began to take on water and sink. What was once a $4.3 million program with over 1,200 active offices, graduating over 240,000 students, it stands now merely as a shell of its former self, with only a couple hundred active officers throughout the state and other towns actually eliminating the program altogether. So why does it continue and even flourish here on Martha's Vineyard? I believe this program remains because the people on the island get the big picture. The D.A.R.E. program was never about status or numbers or even the big legislative dollars. It has always been about the children and a community's ability to protect them the best way that they know them. It's about parents, teachers, and law enforcement coming together for the common goal of protecting your children against the abuse of drugs and violence. I'd like to thank Donald Olbeckport from the West Tisbury School for their continued support of the D.A.R.E. program and their commitment to it. As a DARE officer, I have come to realize the awesome responsibility I own to be a positive role model in your child's life. I've pondered long and hard about what that word role model means. I've read true role models are those who possess the quality we would like to have, and those who have affected us in a way that make us want to be better people. When I began my career in the Sheriff's Office, we didn't use computers to do our jobs. Very few of the guys I worked with even had cell phones, never mind home computers. When this program began, things like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and text messaging didn't even exist. But in today's world, kids as young as third and fourth grade are walking around with cell phones, and kindergartners are being exposed to the computers and internet. Until I investigated, I was oblivious to the depth in which cyber predators have infiltrated the internet, or the influence of cyber bullying. Do you as parents know how dangerous and available marijuana is today? Or what drugs are most used by kids in our community? The resources are available online, through my office, the school, and many community youth groups like Youth Task Force and Island Wide Youth Collaborative. You need only come together and tap these resources. It's a brave new world, and these dangers growing exponentially as our children mature toward their teens and adulthood. As a parent, I realize the desire to shelter our children from the cold reality of the world outside and to keep them young and innocent for as long as we can. But the world is calling to them every day, and it is our obligation to prepare them for the future, to always remember that knowledge is power, and through it, their greatest protection. I believe we need to become more informed parents to seek out as much information as possible to prepare ourselves and our children for the challenges to come. I have come to realize respect is not a birth or a right, a privilege of giving birth. It must be earned. Shelley Lefko, a well-known parenting expert, was once asked, what was the single biggest piece of advice you can give a parent? She said, no matter what you do in any situation with your child, ask yourself, what beliefs is my child going to take away from this encounter? Will your child walk away saying, I just made a mistake and learned something great? Or, I'm insignificant and my thoughts and feelings don't matter? Many years ago, my daughter sat in a ceremony just like this one and stared up at me as if I was a god. Well, I can assure you I am far from godlike. But it did occur to me the impact I have on her life and the path she will choose I believe that adults our children will become are incumbent on us as parents to foster. Our obligation is to be role models and to teach them right from wrong, but to always temper our criticism with love and affection. To always be their champion and protector. Every child deserves a place they can feel safe and loved, and their home should always be that haven. I can honestly say I never miss a chance to hug my child or to tell her she's wonderful, even though she's the ripe old age of 19. The world is cruel enough for any person, but we can choose to honor our children with confidence and self-esteem with our actions and our words. I urge you 
to be cautious about drug and alcohol use around your children. And if you do use, own it and be prepared to answer the hard questions honestly. Please do not sensationalize, rationalize, or romance past drug and alcohol use. Drug abuse education is a fool's errand unless people like me are supported by people like you. To my students, I would like to provide a bit of truth that I share with all my graduating classes. There is absolutely nothing good about smoking or chewing tobacco. It will only hurt your bodies, period. There's very little good about alcohol. There is much more evidence to the fact that alcohol takes lives every year, destroys homes, and shatters people's dreams. Marijuana is not a harmless drug. It's dangerous and will sap you physically and mentally, destroy your lungs faster than cigarettes, shorten your attention span, and leave you dull, less ambitious, and mentally dependent. These are the truths, and you will probably hear them many times on your journey toward adulthood. It's up to you to believe them or not. No one can make that choice for you. Follow your heart, and don't let anyone influence your decision to be drug and violence free. As you leave this program and move on to bigger and better things, I request you to one, remember one piece of advice. Be courageous. Have the courage to stand up against those who attempt to make you less than you can be, as an individual and as a class. In our world, fear can play a major role in many decisions we make. Fear of failure, fear of not fitting in, fear of losing friends, being alone, fear of being singled up. But never allow fear to decide your fate or stop you from following your dreams. If you ever need me, I'm only a phone call away. I consider you all my friends now, and I promise to be there for you. Thank you again for sharing this time with me. Take care of each other and be safe.